This is a video to show you how I organize the many assorted cream tool dies I have so that I can quickly find the correct ones when I need to. Now, some of you may be less familiar with what cream tools and dies are, so just let me show um, quickly what uh, some of these things are. Without going into too much detail, um, I'll give you a very quick uh, walkthrough of some uh, of the uh, connectors um, that are available. Uh, this is just a small range um, of connectors I have. This is a sample of uh, some of the boot lace ferrule connectors that I have. So I have a few uh, sample connectors uh, to show you um, and um, to start with we have here a fork connector, we have a ring terminal, we have a bullet, we have a piggyback because um, this connector allows you have another terminal connector piggyback off the side. We have boot lace ferrule, um, that's a large one obviously. Uh, we have copper lugs, which are used for terminating, connecting to battery um, bolt terminals generally. Um, that one is a handles a 10 mil square wire and it has an 8 millimeter diameter. This one handles a 70 millimeter square wire uh, entry with the eight millimeter diameter. These are Anderson plugs. Um, that's a small one to fit a uh, SB50 which handles up to 50 amp current. Um, these, this is the housing. That's the plug. The housings can accommodate a few um, sizes of plugs. So that's great. Uh, this is a larger plug for a larger housing and the housings come in different colors if they're genuine products only a red will, will mate to a red or green to a green or just to show you what tool you use so in the case of these um, insulated terminals here you see the yellow is a size a bigger size than the blue which is a bigger size than the red so, what you do is feed, feed the wire in there, put the uh, end in there, and um, then you squeeze, fit into that one. For the boot lace, ferro connectors you would use something to suit the diameters in this case this tool fits 0.25 to 10 millimeter square wire so what you do is you fit the wire in here then you push it into here and then you squeeze hard and what it does is create a square um, crimp now this big one doesn't fit this so you have to have another tool and this is where if you had replaceable dies you'd be able to do that for the uh, copper lux uh, they're actually very thick and solid so you have to use a tool like this well you could try it with weaker tools but uh, they're not gonna Work. This been 10 mil square wire. I select 10 here and then I select 10 there as well. And then put the wire through there and put it through this and squeeze hard. It provides a hexagonal crimp shape. For this bigger one, 70 mil squared, even this tool is not adequate. So here I have a bigger tool. It has 
dies which uh, can be removed um, in here I've a, a die to handle 50 mil square but you can see uh, spare dies here ranging in sizes so if I pull out this die it has one twenty millimeter square, so you put the two of them together and they'll crimp uh, the wires in a hexagonal crimp shape. This is great because all the dies are in here. You're not going to lose the dies. Uh, they're well organized. It's great if you have a kit where the dies um, can be kept as part of the kit. When you crimp the uh, ring terminals, you end up with um, connectors that look like this for the Anderson plugs. They will look like this, and when they're in the housing, they just look uh, like that. Yeah, I have a large Anderson plug. It's a SB120, which is uh, capacity for 120 amps. And the cable I have here is a 1BNS, uh, gauge 1 battery start cable. The problem I have when I have a wide range of uh, crimp tool dies, and you may have the same problem or more if you have more dies to keep, is that if I take all these dies and I put them into one container, it is going to be a headache trying to identify the correct dies uh, to use what the die is for, which bottom jaw fits which top jaw. So um, that is a hassle I have had in the past um, where I figured I need a better way to do this. So for me, this is a very cheap, cost-effective way of organizing my dies so that I can... Um, pick the right one quickly uh, and keep them in an organized fashion. I just use key tags and I write the name of that particular die in the key tag paper and then I use a tie wire to tie to the key tag. I have a die suited to RG 58 and 59 coaxial cables. So if you look at the tag, I've written the description there. Then all I do, is use the tie wire to tie the top and bottom jaws together. That's it. That's a insulated terminal die you can see the color coding all these ones are done so it doesn't matter if you jumble them up then i use a simple box drop them in there you don't need the partitions, this just happens to be the box I have. And it's done. Now, if I need to replace a particular die, then I take the crimp tool unscrew the top and bottom jaws, remove the jaws, put the die to one side. In this case, I have the tag pre-made for it, so I will put the tag to the die that I just removed. Then I pick the die that I want, remove it from the tag, install it to the tool, screw them on, leave the tag, in the box I'm good to go so I should only at any one time have one loose tag which is for the particular die that's in the device that's it 
I hope you found this video interesting and subscribe as I have a few more videos coming online soon.